Hello everybody and welcome to Red Toolhouse. In this video we want to talk about our automatic chicken door opener that we built and why it's so important to have that here on the homestead. So why is it so important to have one of these uh, on the homestead? Is it not easy just to come down in the morning, uh, open the door and let the chickens out and come down after they've roosted at night and close it up? Yeah, it should only take just a couple minutes, if not seconds out of your time. So why is it such a big deal? Well, the situation we ran into is we enjoy being on the homestead, but we have to look at things that anchor us to the homestead and see if we can incorporate some automation to help us out in those situations. Um, opening the door in the morning and closing it at night, you think that's two very simple operations, but that's something that has to be done every day. Due to the predation issues we have here, we've got a lot of predator pressure that if we skip a day, if we leave the door open at night, then I guarantee you I'll have a dead chicken, at least one dead chicken the next morning. So it has to be done every single day, every single night. So when you look at those type of things, repetitive like that, obviously the, the, the logical conclusion is what can we do to automate that so we don't have to be tied down that much in that specific area. So uh, we looked around and we found a, um, a really nice plan for an automatic chicken door. And I I'm a firm believer in giving credit where credit's due. So I want to thank So Edible Permaculture. This is their design and uh, based it off everything they have on their website. I'll uh, post the website below. The blog link includes the specifics, including all the pieces of equipment you'll need and a wiring diagram on how to put it together. So this configuration we put together is for a single pop door. And our coop actually has two different pop doors. And as I expand this, uh, we'll get into that. Um, first thing I'll say is the cost of this automatic chicken door is not cheap. With all the components, you're about $200. Uh, so that may seem pretty expensive uh, for a single door, but it's one of those things where the utilizing that automation I, I felt was worth it and I wanted to have that opportunity uh, to be able to uh, um, take that responsibility and, and, uh, and automate it. And it was actually a pretty good experience for the boys. We, uh, we used this as an opportunity to be a little engineering uh, project for homeschool. So we sat down and uh, worked on the electrical elements together. Well, the first component needed in this uh, configuration, of course, is the door. And if you look online, you can see these automatic chicken door kits that you can buy that actually incorporate the door. That's what I liked about this design. It was, um, it, it didn't come with a door. You made your own. And I already had my pop doors cut into the side of the coop, <clears throat> so I didn't want to have to retrofit anything. And I had different ideas. The, the design that I looked at on So Edible Permaculture actually used the linear actuator, which is this element here. I'll talk about that in a second. They actually used it to operate a, a swing door. So they had this device on the outside of the coop that swung down and closed. And I just like the idea, even though either, these are outdoor grade, they can be in the weather, I like the idea of having it on the inside. And I wanted to go with a guillotine style door. So just utilizing the, a single direction there, didn't have to worry about pivoting, all that just, just simply came right down um, and, and closed like a guillotine. And what I did really easily, uh, something simple was, just the door itself is made out of plexiglass so just the material that I had around and I like the fact that it wasn't going to swell or expand or contract with temperature and moisture but I just made two little um, using two pieces of plywood here just made a little track that this rides in you can kind of see it it rides behind that and then I'm, my two by four here I just put another piece of plywood on this side so it made a track there so it rides behind this piece of plywood and rides behind this piece of plywood now the linear actuator, this is the most expensive piece in the entire setup. Now you may want to look, there's, uh, there's all kinds of sources now I'm finding on eBay where you can actually get these a little bit cheaper. I think, I think this one was 60 or $70, so you can imagine out of that $200 expense, this is a pretty good chunk of that. So what I like about the linear actuator, of course, is simple range of motion. Again, very simple to, the, to, um, to operate, just 12 volts and the reversing polarity makes it go up or down. And the fact that there's not a lot of moving parts, obviously a little motor that spins a shaft and you have this single direction of, of movement, so you don't have to worry about strings or cables or all those type of things. So I really like that element. Again, this is overkill. This linear actuator is, I think, uh, rated for 275 pounds. So um, you could do a lot with that. You could lift up this end of the coop. 
but it's my understanding that the linear actuators I've seen haven't found anything that's you're rated for five pounds or two pounds, nothing like that. Kind of the variation you do see is the amount of stroke. Like this is a 12 inch stroke. So um, it means the shaft can, can actually move a total of 12 inches. Well, a typical chicken door doesn't necessarily need to be 12 inches. It could be eight inches. So you may be able to save money going with an eight inch stroke. Well, I apologize for the darkness. This spotlight's kind of uh, poor video quality, but uh, I put these units in here inside my, this is the side of the coop where the egg, the nesting boxes are. So obviously you want darkness to promote good uh, egg laying. But uh, what you can see here are the, the basic components. Now it may look like an octopus with all the wiring. And of course the spider webs have really camped out and had a field day here. But you can see at the top there, the black box, that's my battery. So that's just a basic 12 volt battery. I think maybe 12, 14 bucks there. The uh, charge controller, which I believe is only a, um, it's like a, I don't even know if it's a two amp charge control. It's a very, very basic. I think it was maybe $10. So obviously a good quality Chinese item there. Uh, the two white boxes, of course, are the digital timers. And that's um, obviously where the, the magic happens as far as setting the time to open or close. And the little item there to the far right with the green light is the relay. And all that does is just allow uh, the polarity to be reversed because that's how the linear actuator goes up and down. Again, it's 12 volt ground. Um, so two wires going to linear actuator. So all it does is just reverse that. So what was 12 volt to push it down, switch to ground to bring it back up. That's kind of a very poor way of describing reverse polarity, but <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. So the timer elements, uh, where all the magic happens, of course, that's what sets the uh, time to open and close. Uh, but we'll talk about the charge controller real quick. Again, the, the battery and the uh, solar charge controller are just to regulate voltage uh, from the solar panel to the battery and, of course, to the devices. That way it doesn't overcharge and burn something up or send too much voltage to the components and burn them out or let the battery run down undercharge, that type of thing. So it's got some neat little elements on it. Again, very basic. Uh, kind of shows you that the, right now, even though it's almost 8 o'clock p.m., uh, the solar panel is producing 13 volts. Um, and it shows you the status of the battery. There's all kinds of little things you can toggle through. And when you, when you pick that thing up, it feels really cheap. It feels like a $12 charge controller. So uh, it's probably Harbor, Harbor Freight type quality there. So that's just, all that box is doing is just regulating. You've got three inputs there. You've got uh, the leads going to the battery. You've got the leads coming from the solar panel. And then that's the, uh, that's the black cable coming down there. And then of course the uh, leads going to the components. So power comes from the charge controller to the timer. Those timers are just wired in series there. <clears throat> the first timer is to close uh, the door. And so that's set to fire off at 9.45 p.m. So that uh, kicks off and it'll, it'll actually run. This, this timer is made to only um, open and close within one minute increments and uh, so the stroke of that linear actuator is I think 33 seconds for it to go through its full stroke so to go 12 inches it takes 33 seconds so there's actually an extra 17 seconds that power is put on that but the linear actuator can handle that it's not going to burn it up it's just it just once it reaches its uh, maximum stroke then it just kind of stops there so that the extra 17 seconds of power is not an issue well, obviously, same with the next timer. That's the open timer, so that's set to fire off at 6.15 a.m. Uh, and obviously, we're in the middle of summer. As we change uh, to fall and winter, then I'll change those times. Uh, but the same thing happens there. It's, it fires off, runs for a minute, of course, and uh, opens the door. Again, the relay just simply does that reverse polarity. And you can see the wire, the wire going up the ceiling there, is the wire that runs to the linear actuator. And what that is, that's actually just, uh, I think it's... Uh, old wire I cut off of um, uh, vacuums and appliances. I'm one of those hoarder guys that if I throw away an electronic device and it's got a good plug on it, I keep it. So uh, that's what happened there. So um, this timer, I think these timers are like $4 a piece and they're battery powered. And it's my understanding that the actual power helps charge those batteries. But you've got a lot of little options here. Like I can toggle back and forth to, uh, to manual. And so that would actually fire off the... Uh, you can see it here, it's, it's showing that it's activating, it's sending power to the relay. Um, that's the open, and that one's already open. So, 
Again, very simple stuff. If, if you go to the link I'm going to show you, the So Edible Permaculture, you can see the wiring diagram on this. I'm not going to take the time to reinvent what he's already done. He's done a great job on that. So you can check that out and use that wiring diagram. So the last component you need, of course, is a solar panel. So uh, here's a simple, simple panel. I believe this panel was about $19, $20, something like that. And again, all of this stuff is on Amazon. So uh, just simply mounted it out here. This is south facing somewhat, but I've got a, got a big hill right here and trees leaning out. So direct sunlight, I get maybe, maybe three hours tops of direct sunlight a day. Um, but you know, if, if I really wanted to make this as efficient as possible, then I would go this way and, and get it away from these trees that are hanging over and maybe get you know, five or six more hours or even try to go out further. But since I'm simply operating um, a 12 volt device, uh, for a minute, a minute in the morning and a minute in the evening, so two minutes total a day, I got plenty of juice from that. So um, I, got, uh, I got energy to burn, uh, if, if you consider that. So it works really well. Um, I've had this system installed now for about, about two and a half months, going on three months. And I waited before doing this video because I wanted to make sure it was going to be, uh, it was, you know, if I'm going to give my seal of approval or say something worked, then I want to make sure I'm not lying to anybody and saying, oh, I've tried it for a day and a half and it's been fine. Um, I suggest you spend the money to do it. So I didn't want to do that. <clears throat> Break my neck here. So, um, but I, ha I have been using this now for about three months, going on three months, and it has been very effective. Uh, it's been very reliable. I have not come down and had a, you know, a false open or a false close or anything like that. The one thing you got to remember is if you go check out your charge controller and change your timers or mess around with that, then you may accidentally take it out of automatic mode. So just have to double check those type of things. But uh, like I said, $200 investment. You may already have these components, um, so it could save you some money there if you've got some of these things laying around, or you may be able to find them cheaper. But uh, if you're looking for an automatic option to open and close your chicken coop doors, then I strongly suggest uh, checking this out. If you have any questions, uh, especially about the um, solar-powered automatic chicken door, again, there'll be resources posted below, but feel free to send me a message or comment below. I'll answer any questions. All of these components I used, you can find on Amazon. And if you go to our website, redtoolhouse.com, uh, down at the bottom of the home page, you'll see an opportunity to sign up for our newsletter. And again, we're not going to blow you up. We're not going to send you all this ridiculous email. We're just going to just keep you up to date with what's going on in the on the homestead. But everyone that's on the list will be automatically registered to win a prize. Uh, we do monthly drawing and have a giveaway. And each month somebody's won anything from uh, um, chicken nipples to, uh, to books to uh, tools that are useful on the, on the homestead. And for July, we're giving away one of the Red Tool House hats, the style I'm wearing right now. Obviously it won't be this one because this one's sweaty and nasty. But we'll give you a brand new hat and we'll ship it out to you if you're the lucky winner. So again, all you got to do is just sign up for our newsletter and you'll be on that list. Well, if you like this video, we ask that you give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Again, you just get notifications of when we have a new video coming out. We try to do videos every Friday. And then we have some of our tips and shorter videos throughout the week. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash redtoolhousefarm. 